the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Let's sing it one more time. Hallelujah. You have won. You have won the victory. Oh, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have won it all for me. Hallelujah. Just wave your hands to Jesus, everyone. Together, let's lift our hands. Are you blessing him in the spirit? Lift your hands to Jesus in gratitude and as an expression of your confidence. Father, we bless you. Indeed, the victorious one, we worship you. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him even in your understanding. Faithful God. You do wonders in our midst. You do wonders in our midst. Powerful song. You do wonders in our midst. You're the faithful God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are mighty in this place. Are you worshiping the King? You are mighty in this place. You are mighty. You are mighty in this place. You're the faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 You're the faithful God. Hallelujah. 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 
now ask him for a visitation tonight lord give me an encounter by your word be sure you are praying be sure you are praying no distractions give me an encounter even by your word the bible says the lord appeared again to samuel in shiloh by his word an encounter by your word tonight that will change my life in jesus name we pray the bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion you do not appear before the Lord and go down you do not appear before the Lord and go back to yesterday it is always from strength to strength to strength to strength it says now the Lord is that spirit there are many spirits but the Lord is that spirit that spirit that lifts that spirit that blesses he says and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty and then he says but we all with unveiled face beholding us in a mirror the glory of god he says we are changed we are changed you never remain when you see him you change you change you change what does it mean to change that what had victory over you yesterday no longer can have victory over you today because you have changed that the words that came out from your lips that was downplayed by demons because it was powerless that the next time you speak that changed version of you will speak words that carry authority in the spirit hallelujah my dear people you sing one more song for me spirit lead me where my trust let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my faith could ever wander. My faith could ever That's what is happening to someone tonight. In the presence of my Savior. Spirit lead. Spirit lead me when my trust. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you will call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith could be made stronger in the breath. One more time. Spirit leads. Let me walk upon the water wherever you will call. Take me deeper, take me deeper than my feet could ever walk. My faith, my faith will be stronger. The breath. Can we sing it one more time? Just the voices. Spirit, please. Walk upon the water wherever And the Bible says when jacob dismissed his wives his cattle the bible says he was left alone and there came a man to him by night and wrestled with him and jacob refused to let that man go he said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob said thou shalt no longer be called jacob but israel 
for as a prince you have had power with God and prevailed the Bible says he touched the hollow of his thigh and he blessed him and the sun arose and he called that place Peniel he says for I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved father give us an encounter that will transform our lives tonight give us encounters that will shift us to new spiritual dimensions and i pray that jesus be glorified tonight in jesus name i pray god bless you please be seated in the presence of the lord hallelujah we have very serious business tonight and i want you to coordinate your attention by the spirit reject every form of distraction tonight because there are certain teachings that are applicable to certain people there are teachings that are applicable to a particular gender or age range or um, geographic um, region but there are teachings that are applicable to all men provided you are alive and provided you are a man these teachings are very important and tonight is one of such teachings and it is my prayer that the Lord would cause that your time spent here tonight would be a, a destiny defining moment in the name of Jesus appreciate us everyone for the sacrifice within the auditorium outside everywhere Azaria family following and our global family following online may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ let me by way of honor just appreciate um his excellency in our midst the ambassador i anderson madubike the nigerian ambassador to australia god bless you thank you god bless you bless you an honor to have you in the presence of the lord sir May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's celebrate him. Amazing. Such a humble man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, he's insisting to say something. We'll honor you. Please come up, sir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Let's give him a minute, even if it's just to say hello. God bless you. God bless you. I'm embarrassed by this now. God bless you. Thank you. is a turning point of my life. I've been praying my whole life to meet him. I've been in diplomatic service for 29 years. God has blessed me so much. But I know the blessing that I'm going to get today will take me to another level. He's the only person I call the apostle of God in this great country. I am honored to meet you. God is good. Thank you. Let's bless him. Very, very humbling from His Excellency, the Nigerian Ambassador to Australia. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Indeed, the Lord will do you good in the name of Jesus. And every other special person here, may God bless you. This is Koinonia, the house of God. Praise God. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that set themselves against me round about. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, and a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Let's get straight to the word tonight. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 17. Mighty God. Revelations chapter 2. 
and verse 17. Let me turn it very quickly so that we begin our teaching. Shali para kuske anamadakata. The Bible says, He that hath an ear, I'm reading from my Bible, King James, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Then it says, To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth, save he that receiveth it. Grant us understanding, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight's teaching is specially dedicated to those who have made a determination under God that they will live fruitful lives and lives that are dedicated to glorifying Jesus. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to people, men and women, who have made up their minds that they will fulfill their divine call in Christ. Tonight's teaching is dedicated to those who have obtained the help and the mercy of God in their various endeavors and have tasted certain levels of greatness and certain levels of success. Tonight's message is also dedicated to those who have become weary as far as pursuing the purposes of God for their lives are concerned. Men and women who have been beaten down by the vicissitudes of life and are seeking perspective and an explanation as to the happenings around their lives. Tonight's teaching is also dedicated to those who are about to begin their journey as far as their spiritual experiences and destiny is concerned. So if you belong to any of these categories aforementioned, you're welcome to a teaching that indeed will transform your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are many names that believers are called in scripture. Theologically speaking, believers are classified in two groups. When, when God gives us our naming, we are classified in two groups broadly. There is the name that a believer is given by reason of his oneness with Christ. These are the names that come on account of the privilege of the new birth. For instance, the Bible calls us sons of God. The Bible calls us believers. The Bible calls us one with Christ. It calls us joint heirs with Christ and even heirs of God. Jesus himself was teaching in John 15 and he said, I am the vine and he calls us branches grafted by that substitutionary sacrifice to the vine. But there are other names that he calls us, not just based on identification, but based on function. For instance, he calls us light. For instance, he calls us salt. He calls us ambassadors. He calls us a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen generation, a peculiar people. These are names that attempt to describe our function. But there are other names that are used in scripture as a testament of endurance, as a testament of the strength and the stamina that an individual can derive from within his spirit. Many of them, but one of them that is very important for the teaching tonight is called an overcomer the bible uses that term an overcomer to describe a believer 
who has sustained the grace and the stamina to run this race and to finish with honor and with dignity. Hallelujah. That it is possible for a believer in addition to being one with Christ, in addition to being the son of God, in addition to uh, the revelation of our, our identification, and then in addition to the names given as far as our function is concerned, that you can, you can receive this addition like a credential that more than the son of God that you are, more than light and salt, more than a king and a priest, more than an ambassador, more than all of these names, there is a noble name that only the mouth of the Lord can call a believer. It's called an overcomer. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 17 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. And then it says to him, so this is not a message to everyone. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. I will give. To eat of the hidden manna. Hmm. Number two. I will give him a white stone. A stone with a name written on it. Which no man knows except the one who is given. Look at this kind of complicated reward just for being an overcomer. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that in the entire lifetime of any individual for that matter, not necessarily a believer, any individual that is privileged to walk upon the face of this earth, the Bible lets us know that God is not only the God of all flesh, but he's also the God of times and the God of seasons. We have dealt with the law of seasons. Please do well to listen to that teaching. And that in your pursuit and your journey towards the knowledge of God, towards fulfilling your divine call and assignment towards destiny, the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the possibility exists that you can be challenged by situations and circumstances that attempt to impede your journey, number one, or attempt to fight you, or attempt to stop you from finishing that journey, or even attempt to stop you from starting the journey. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that these possibilities exist. Hallelujah. Yeah. The second information that is very interesting and important is that no single person wearing a mortal body is immune from the reality of these seasons. That the only thing we are, the guarantee that we are given in Christ is that we can sustain the grace and the intelligence to rise above them. But that in a man's lifetime, it must be captured in your human experience. Seasons that represent pain, seasons that represent discomfort, seasons where defeat looks imminent. This is a reality that we see even in the life of Jesus, our pattern man. The Bible tells us to look on to Jesus, calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him. The next word after that is endurance. The Bible says he endured. You would think that because we are dealing with Jesus, you would not have to use such an expression for one who is the king of kings and the lord of lords. Why will the fountain of wisdom need to endure? Why will he who is the captain of the host of heaven, why would you associate the creator with that word endurance? who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Then number two, he says, despise the shame. Two things he did that the Bible says is very instructive. That in following Jesus, we must pay attention to the fact that even Jesus was not immune from pain and shame. Now, most people in church, most believers in the body of Christ, 
have not been taught the spiritual systems put in place to deal with these seasons and these times in as much as we teach on victory in as much as we teach on the invincibility of the believer as far as his association with the Christ is concerned we must be honest and matured enough to expose believers to the things that befall all men and to prepare their hearts so that if and when these seasons come the believers can sustain stamina to be able to go through these seasons and then return victorious are we together now so for instance we've had believers who have gone through unpleasant situations say during the pandemic and after the pandemic people have lost money who love jesus with all their hearts people have lost loved ones without answers there are people who the equation of their lives and destinies in spite of their committal to the things of god it doesn't seem to add up and many of them continue to ask secret questions and that is the responsibility of a shepherd in christ to be able to bring perspective and light to issues even difficult issues like this are we together first peter chapter 4 and verse 12 media let's walk together please first peter chapter 4 from verse 12 to 16. apostle peter is teaching us now and here's what he had to say beloved he said so he's talking to those who are in christ beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you he says as though some strange thing happened to you this is a very powerful information from a matured christian who is an apostle he's teaching and training you that you must be able to build a level of strength and stamina in the spirit that if and when you are confronted with uncomfortable situations that you do not address them as though some some mysterious thing were happening to you it says but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ happy are ye for the spirit of glory and god rested upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified 15 but none of you let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief so there are different dimensions of suffering now and as an evil doer or as a busybody in other men's matters last verse these are various things that have sufferings attached to them yet if any man suffer as a christian let him not be ashamed but let him glorify god on this behalf scripture number two psalm 61 from verse one to three this is the cry of one who has been put down in life this is a distress a distress cry coming from a sincere heart unto god hear my cry oh god he says attend unto my prayer verse 2 from the end of the earth will i cry unto you in other words no matter where you are oh god hear me when my heart is overwhelmed hmm, it says lead me to the rock that is higher than i for thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy so the bible lets us know that it is possible listen carefully it is possible for a believer to go through a season in his life in the life of a ministry in the life of an organization in the life of a family in the life of a nation and in the life of a continent where it seems as though the word of god is not producing the kind of result that you believe for it to produce in fact the bible says in 
Proverbs 24 and verse 10. Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. It says, if thou faint in the day of adversity. Everyone say the day of adversity. December 25th in Nigeria and across the body of Christ is generally, it's been a day that has been earmarked to celebrate Christmas. Is that true? Wherever you are across the world, once it's December 25th, usually people celebrate Christmas. There are days earmarked to celebrate Easter. Um, other religions like, like our Islamic brothers have days where they can select to celebrate different, you know, activities. Other religions have days. Now, the Bible is telling you that is not the only day you should pay attention to. That there is another day, please give it to us, called the day of adversity. Not the hour of adversity. Not the minute of adversity. Day there does not just mean 24 hour. It means season. There is a season of adversity. And he's giving you an information up hand. That if you faint in the day of adversity... It is because your strength is small. It is not because the adversity naturally should sustain the power to overwhelm you. But you did not build strength for that day. Are we still together? In Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We'll begin our reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 3. Apostle Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And he began to pray for them that they be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Everybody say strengthened with might in the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Uh-huh may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasseth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Next verse. It says, Now unto him hmm, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, but all that is according to the power that works in us. Not just according to his power. According to the capacity that works in us. Last verse says, Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. So the Bible encourages us to be strengthened with might in the inner man. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, again, Apostle Paul is teaching here, and he says, Let us not be weary in well doing. Do not be weary. He's mentioning a word here now that there is also a there is a relationship, a strange relationship between weariness and well doing. That a man can be involved in well doing. And yet be wary. He leaves you with an information that provides comfort. It says for in due season we will reap. If, if there is a condition. If we faint not. That means even if you have been um, committed to well doing. If you faint, you may not survive the times where the harvest will come for you. I do not know one great man. Who became great properly with the dignity of kingdom integrity. Who does not have a story of these seasons of adversity. Whether in ministry, whether in business. In fact, the Bible lists the credentials of the kinds of people you should follow. It says, follow them who through faith and patience. If you find results that did not come through faith and patience, it's advising you to run away because something is wrong with that result. Are we together now? Follow them, he says, who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. It is very important for us to know that adversity 
is a reality that will attempt every life every family sooner or later you know by the privilege of what i do i'm exposed to people's painful situation and the most obvious and i would say the most um, challenging if i'm right on that is anything that has to do with the loss of loved ones i am exposed literally every day to someone or some family that is attempting to make sense over the loss of a loved one or over loss of money or loss of a job some some kind of situation that represents adversity and over the years i've had to look for a scriptural and meaningful explanation to give perspective to those events because i i wish i can tell you you have all the answers at those times but there are times you'll be challenged with things that you will exhaust your intelligence from border to border and not find any answer that makes sense to such a situation now there are people who fail and go through things in life because of um obvious disobedience to kingdom principles as far as victory is concerned but i have seen in my life that there are others who you cannot exactly pinpoint anything wrong as far as they are complying to kingdom principles in as much as we can see is concerned and yet yet i have seen great people who love jesus christ pass on to glory painfully so i have seen people who love jesus with all their hearts go through tragedies i have seen families who love jesus with all their hearts i've seen patients sick who love jesus with all their hearts and they died quoting scripture they died saying by his stripes i am healed i've seen people who continue to declare that my tomorrow is great and they went excuse me they went to their place of work and returned back with a sack letter I have seen people who have trusted God to make sense of every area of their lives finances spiritual life marriage relationships parenting you know their jobs all kinds of situations the Bible says listen very carefully according to Psalm 27 verse 13 and 14 all men all men without exemption go through the seasons of weariness of adversity of frustration hardships challenges mishap and so on and so forth here's what it says psalm 27 13 and 14 i had fainted unless i had believed to see the goodness of the lord in the land of the living verse 14 it says wait on the lord be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart wait i say on the lord scripture number two is a popular one isaiah chapter 40 verse 29 and 30 if you do not know this scripture it's a sign that there is a measure of laziness in your spiritual life because usually if you are one who is committed to prayer and fasting no matter how weak you should have come across this scripture is a classic as far as the ministry of prayer and fasting is concerned the Bible says he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increased strength now the reality is in verse 30 please read with me ready one to read even the youth shall faint <laughs> ladies and gentlemen look at what you are reading very carefully he's not talking about backsliding here this has nothing to do with backsliding this is the reality that befall men by reason of wearing a mortal body that there is the emotional wear and tear that can befall men now you know that the glory of the young people is their strength and yet the bible says as far as this season of adversity is concerned even the youth shall faint and be weary and it says the young men shall utterly fall so it is true that men can lose strength 
it is true that people can go through seasons of adversity i just feel like defining that word adversity please write it down adversity from the word university just remove uni and put ad adversity what is adversity i wrote down here a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune a state of serious or continued difficulty a state of serious or continued difficulty or misfortune so when we talk about adversity we talk about a state of continued difficulty or some form of misfortune hardships challenges mishaps you would imagine that these kinds of things should never happen to a believer and as far as the word of god is concerned we continue to declare and release our faith for days of victory but the reality of the life of a man upon this earth is that sooner or later something of this sort will either come to happen to you or to someone who is connected to you you know i've had the honor and the privilege of standing before many dead bodies in my life many some praying for them to come back to life others just standing and looking at the reality of the other side of life and i can tell you this every time i stand before a dead body i look at myself and everybody here or everybody standing there and i tell myself in truth the difference between us and this body if christ tarries is time of course i know you will not believe me time every dead body you see was once alive to see another dead body are we together now how about people who lost money there are people who have lost millions and billions of naira and dollars in business and not all of them were corrupt and wicked and foolish people no some of them were sincere people like the gentleman i was so touched when he was the gentleman who received the breakthrough now you are attempting to give god all your salary which is a huge sacrifice and then some wind or rain comes to take away your roof listen job the book of job there's no time to go there but the book of job is a classic and and i i bless the lord for the fact that that book was represented in the bible it's not an extra biblical text so it qualifies to be called all scripture were inspired by god and it is also profitable the bible says for doctrine for rebuke for establishment in righteousness that the man of god be mature whole not missing in anything the bible tells us about this strange man called job how that he feared god and eschewed evil the wealthiest man in the east the bible records then the bible now flips to the realm of the spirit and begins to give us a very interesting picture that one time the sons of god came together and satan was in their midst now i'm not here tonight to argue the theological debate as to whether it was um satan still has access to the presence of god and so on and so forth this is not my assignment tonight but one thing i can tell you is the fact that he is not called angel or lucifer should already tell you that is already his fallen state are we together already we see the ministry of killing stealing and destroying with him and yet the bible says the sons of god were gathered and satan was in their midst and he said has thou considered my servant job and satan began a very dangerous proposition does he serve you for nothing have you not fortified him created a garrison around his life in other words who would not serve you with the kind of defense and protection give me permission he said to touch him and he says you can go then just make sure his life is spared then the bible says there was a certain day let me show you that scripture it always the, the tragic story started with a certain day 
it says there was a certain day that means job woke up in the morning and said this is the day the lord has made thank you jesus not knowing that by evening he will be on the ground with dust on his body many people left their homes in peace and returned back in tears lord this is not my covenant with you this is not what i planned for and the bible tells us that this man called job back to back now i don't want to scare you i wish you had the courage to allow me read job chapter one and see the back to back testimonies that this man his children were blessing the lord something happened and for all of the tragedies there was one person left to come back and give him the story sir just to tell you your cattle everything is dead sir to tell you your sons and your daughters there is no man i know no man i know who may have gone through the kind of situation job went through within that time range everything happened within the day the bible says job sat on the ground and removed his clothes and job did not count god unfaithful he did not even the bible says that he fell down on the ground and do you know what job did he worshiped and worshiped where was your tears and worshiped knowing that all my children dead my business dead everything dead the bible says job arose he rent his mantle he shaved his hair he fell down and worshiped we like to laugh at people and say old testament but most people don't have the courage to do this even with the holy ghost indwelling in them that you can see these kinds of things and sit down on the ground what kind of song are you going to sing sing it for me let me hear the song you sing after this kind of situation many of us you misplaced ten thousand is there it's just that you can't find it you are angry you've you've insulted god you know them you know the money is there it's not like they stole it it's just that you can't figure out where you kept it and the anger even in church you can't raise a song and here is a man who has lost everything and the bible says he bowed down and worshiped and worshiped can i tell you this every man under the sound of my voice will sooner or later be confronted with seasons and situations that will test your conviction and test everything you know and believe about god i wish i can tell you it will never happen but i'll be lying to you provided you are alive one day there is a day of adversity i was preaching somewhere and i gave a reference about jesus going to the other side and the bible says jesus said let us go to the other side and when he began that journey it was jesus that said let us go so you can be sure that his all-seeing eye already saw the end from beginning and yet as soon as they started that journey the bible says there arose a storm of wind with jesus as the visionaire with jesus as the one who sold that idea to go to the other side the bible says the wind was so boisterous water was getting into the boat and jesus was sleeping the disciples were angry and they had to go and tap him they said carest thou not that we perish are you not concerned that we can die and the bible says when he got up he rebuked the wind he said shalom be still he rebuked the winds and everything was calm and he challenged them for their unbelief and they the rest of the story continues but forget that jesus overcame the fact that the storm did not fear him 
are we together now you would think the spirits would not even dare come near him one of the most scary scripture for me in the bible was what happened in um i think that should be matthew chapter 4 the temptation of jesus the bible says after he was baptized the spirit of god drove him to the wilderness he did not go to the wilderness to drink and smoke he went to pray jesus as the word and prayed and fasted for 40 days guess who he saw first when he was done satan how do you see satan as the first person to welcome you after praying and fasting for 40 days you would think the prayer will drive him but the prayer was bringing him the tempter the bible will usually tell you what capacity satan is coming as whether as a deceiver as what now in this capacity he came as a tempter and he looked at jesus eyeball to eyeball do you look at jesus and not shake and fall down after fasting and prayer with the power of the holy ghost the word of god anointed again what should make someone powerful that was not in him and yet satan walked as if he was not seeing him he said mr man you are hungry admit it you are anointed but you are hungry uh, i i know that you are you created the heavens and the earth but you need food now and jesus did not say no i know I'm, I'm the lion of the tribe no satan discerned he was not there but he said you are hungry let me show you that you still you have a problem with all your anointing there is hunger how do you bring such a demeaning statement to such El Shaddai the man who created the heavens and the earth and he says turn this stone to bread and Jesus said no my agenda is greater than my individual satisfaction it is not about me the next temptation the Bible says he took him to the top of the temple a place of worship with people praying there and yet satan stood at the top of the church and said mr man i'm dropping you here fall down for it is written so don't think i'm ignorant he shall put his angels charge over you they will bear you up on their wings lest you dash your feet against the stone don't forget who satan is talking to here jesus so don't be carried away by the fact that Michael threw him down from heaven. He's standing with Jesus now. And he's talking to Jesus as if Michael were greater than him. Number three. The Bible says he picked him up. Not that he said, follow me. He held him and took him into an exceeding high. The, the Bible says he took him more. How do you take somebody? He took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Because every kingdom, there are three things that make a kingdom. A, every kingdom must have glory. It must have the power and authority that backs it represented by the scepter. Are we together now? And it must have inhabitants there. And the Bible says he showed them the glory. And here's what he said, verse 9. Satan now. You don't know how stubborn he is all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me all these things i will give you if you fall down and worship me and jesus said verse 10 get thee ten satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve then the bible makes a very scary statement it says and the devil leaveth him in fact one synoptic account said he left him for a season that in other words don't think as i'm going you will not see me again mm -mm. provided you left heaven and came to it you will find me the next time satan would come he did not come directly to him again he came through one of the most disciplined and emotional person called peter he chose one who was the leader over the people and he manipulated peter's compassion to beg jesus not to die he said jesus you know don't don't go to the cross don't do this and and he rebuked him and said get be behind me satan peter said me 
I just finished talking to you about the church. I'm, I'm, and he says, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. He says, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Satan left and said, you saw me. The next time Satan will come, people were having dinner. And he came through the treasurer. You see why finance department in many ministries must pray like prayer warriors too. There is nobody in any ministry who, not, who should not be a prayer warrior. Don't say mine is just to join wire. You pray because the devil will use anybody and anything. Are we together? Satan came through Judas. I hope you know the, the goal of Judas was not to destroy Jesus. That's why he could not do anything with the money. The goal was to make money from Jesus. Jesus was misusing privileges. Financial opportunities were passing him up and down. And he said, do you know what? Let me last with you and give you Jesus. And then leave him to deal with you and show you his savior. So he was surprised when Jesus gave himself. And he said, no, this was not the plan. And he went and hung himself. Don't think Judas was a bad man. No. For Jesus to trust Judas with money, he was one of the most trusted people there. <laughs> you know i was laughing someone shared a very interesting story that kidnappers kidnapped someone's child and they demanded for 50 million and the family called them and said all they have is fifty thousand. <laughs> and the kidnappers insulted them and off the phone <laughs> in anger and said if they don't bring up to five million they will finish the people and the man said honestly there's nothing they can do they should just keep <laughs> Are we together in other words we've done our best whatever it is at least we're sure he's born again <laughs> let him amen all men can be weary people can go through challenges in their lives and so it is not unusual the bible says but let me tell you this there are basically three reasons and i want you to listen very carefully there are three reasons that cause or three factors that are responsible for these seasons of frustration hardship challenges i want you to listen very carefully every one of us seated under the sound of my voice would have gone through or will go through one or more of these seasons are you ready the first reason why people become weak why people become fatigued spiritually and otherwise why people become discouraged the very first reason listen carefully is what i i term the deference of hope or hope deferred write it down please disappointed expectations can dampen people's spiritual lives disappointed expectations can dampen people's finances you put your money in the business or an investment and it crashes and you're in trouble you try to buy a land eventually you find out there's a court case around that land and they tell you they will get back to you or you submit your cv and for a long time two three years you know sometimes i wonder when people share testimonies here and then they say after i did this and that or maybe when the word came a job i applied for for three four years now called me can you imagine how long that the, the issue is not the miracle the issue is the endurance to have waited three four years are we together the difference of hope the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Write it down, please. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. It says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And when the desire cometh, the Bible says it is a tree of life. Please look at me. Do you know why many young people in this country are already beginning to face 
medical conditions that you would think only people in their late 50s and 60s right now you can see a young boy in his early 20s having the same symptom with someone who is probably 65 seven years because of hope deferred haven't spent five six seven ten years multiple programs in school most of them live with joy in their heart expecting to get a job immediately and from that time 10 years 15 years 20 years no job no nothing financial issues marital issues fertility issues i think one of the most depressing of all issues in my opinion as i have seen is the issue of fruitfulness where people will dance and celebrate everybody will celebrate with them speak prophetic words and 10 15 years later the couple are still waiting especially you see let me tell you this especially if you are in a position where you also have to minister to others i've had the privilege to cry and pray with many preachers and sometimes when you see them cry their heart over these issues it can be hope deferred can be frustrating you will need the grace and the strength of god if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. number two very quickly what is the second reason now pay attention why people's faith is dampened why their zest and their zeal goes down the second is attacks and persecution write it down please the second reason why believers become discouraged why they do not have the strength to continue is attacks and persecution now listen very carefully attacks and persecution very very serious james chapter 1 please from verse 1 to 4 i pray someone is learning tonight james 4 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 i meant to say forgive me james 1 from verse 1 to 4 james 1 it says james a servant of god and of our lord jesus christ to the 12 stripes which are scattered abroad greetings uh-huh it says my brethren so he's speaking to believers look up please count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations knowing this there is an information that you have to know that the trying of your faith listen carefully walketh patience verse 4 it says but let patience have her perfect work that ye may be perfect the word perfect there is mature an entire wanting nothing count it all joy listen to me many of you here have tasted greatness at different levels in politics in government in family life in spirituality ministry whatever it is and i can tell you there is a cross there is a burden of greatness that most people do not know if most people understand the burden that is associated with greatness you will not hurry into greatness you will rather pray for strength and stamina are we together now it is easy to be carried away by the glamour and the prestige that is around the great and not know that every great man is also carrying a cross ask those in business ask those in politics you know many times we complain that politicians are corrupt people and all of that but you imagine someone who gets a position and there are over 130 people connected both extended and nuclear family hoping to eat from that position and everybody is calling and saying my uncle you are a wicked man you are a devil you can help me what is this and now this man has this to deal the temptation to already go there and begin to touch resources is already there because of that reality let me tell you this greatness needs a skill for you to remain there in fact the easiest part of the equation of greatness is becoming it remaining great is harder than becoming great we all aspire to rise to different levels of greatness in the kingdom whether in ministry 
there are people every time i pray for people ministers apostle i want to be like you apostle i want to do this and sometimes i i feel guilty trying to lay hands on those people because i'm asking i hope i'm not destroying this destiny by exposing you to an anointing whose battle you know nothing about every mantle has the battle that confronts it you want to be ceo in africa are you ready to stand the attacks and the charms and the wizardry and the witchcraft that follows greatness i want to go into oil and gas congratulations are you ready for the biases that go through that sector i want to be a politician do you know what it means to live every day with threats for the rest of your political career someone is eyeing you and vowing if you are alive by next week and yet you have to smile through the storms can i tell you the great deserve your applauds most people have no idea that greatness is a burden many times when god does not bring it to a life of an individual it is not him it is not wickedness it is his mercy looking at you and say let me not wreck this fragile destiny that is not yet fortified with knowledge and so he withholds certain things to let you grow hallelujah i remember many years as a man of god many years ago um i i i really had problems I'm, you know I'm, I'm one person who doesn't like trouble at all i want to make sure i call everybody respond to everybody do everything to everybody and it was wearing me out i didn't have time for myself people would call me 12 1 a.m and you know express their disappointment that i'm resting you know and sometimes they try to bully you by saying great men you know they are praying through the night what you know and so on and so forth and at a point in time i had to obtain grace from god to be delivered by him so that i don't become a victim of all these things but i can tell you greatness comes at a cost i remember a gentleman who i think he he lost some, I, don't, I don't know which of the relatives and for more than one month that gentleman kept sending me text messages apostle i will not let you rest until you give me an answer as to why this kind of thing happened to my family i agree that i'm not close to god but i know you are close to god ask him for me and he meant it now i know you can laugh at the gentleman until you go through something that wrecks your destiny and puts and almost a full stop attacks and persecution for as long as you are not great your watch is okay for as long as you are not great a man of god says nobody researches failure people only research success when you fail nobody will go and check and say i need to find out why you are failed except you succeed then you find all kinds of things the moment you succeed something is wrong with your watch it's supposed to be worn well something is wrong with your trouser you didn't you know hold it well something is everything is wrong with the great it is the burden of greatness are you learning something very very important attacks and persecution jesus himself said that in this life you will receive cars and houses and etc with persecution with persecution I'm telling you this because you see the truths that you are hearing from many of you will lift you above the current realms of success you are experiencing and for many others will bring you into that realm but as soon as you are done celebrating the glory and the grace of God in that realm you must be taught the ethics of remaining it's a very delicate realm it's a realm that can wreck you emotionally have you not heard of great people who committed suicide why should a billionaire commit suicide with all the money there why should someone holding a great position remember when the people were arguing and were insulting moses are you the only one god will speak to we want to hear him too moses went to god and said these people will weary me and god said all right let me speak to them separate yourselves rule number one for what that's the condition to hear him after three days they were angrily waiting at the mountain and then he came in cloud and fire and thunder, thundered into their brains and their stubborn heads as 
as soon as that happened do you know what they said listen listen they said god don't ever talk to us again from today talk to moses we will believe him but if that did not happen many of them would not believe that god's not talking to them was an act of his mercy they didn't have the capacity to hear his voice and see the fire the flame of his glory they would not listen attacks and persecution maybe it is already happening to some of us now in your place of work maybe it is about to happen to some of us right now you had a vision of the next level congratulations next level will always come with challenges the moment you are great something is wrong with your children the moment you are great something is wrong with you but now oh lord and a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head so number one factor that is responsible for the weakness and the weariness of believers is the difference of hope disappointed expectations number two persecutions can i tell you jesus who was the son of the living god for as long as he was a young boy he could freely enter the temple and learn with the scribes and pharisees nobody had a problem with him but the day the holy ghost landed on his head and the voice said this is my beloved son hear ye him he returned in the power of the holy spirit and the bible says his fame went abroad there was a group of people who said look this young boy there is something wrong with this gentleman something is wrong the whole city is already beginning to hear your voice and they started finding an occasion and because jesus was a man they found it they found an occasion remember when they were before herod all kinds of troubles this guy said he would destroy the temple that took us decades and build it in three days he was talking about the temple of his body nobody asked him what were you really talking about that was not their business it was an occasion one day someone will come and stand before your pharmacy and see it as big as this auditorium and say investigate the life of these people i know them there is nowhere who would have given you one billion naira you are a thief i will not rest until we dig into this welcome to the world of men one day your father will win an election or your uncle or your mother and you will be surprised the new name you will be called you will think it will be a name of honor and glory until they call you a fraudster you they catch you in 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 a kfc buying food of five thousand they will insult your father for it how you afforded five thousand how about a preacher for as long as you're small and not doing anything and not making any impact that's all right nobody has that time but may god begin to honor you and grant you grace and then you see all kinds of things how about business people someone calls you today i'm in uk someone calls you tomorrow you're in us must you say it but that's where you are should you lie just say i'm not available why must you say i'm in us you must you draw me that you see and from the sincerity of your heart welcome to the world of men you stand in the midst of people and you have your watch or your shirt that is god is showing his faithfulness through you are in trouble for that even if it's a burial while you are standing there you will think that people are just crying only remember for what we have done people are watching you and as soon as that burial is done they will tear you the way you pieces you know protein meat in, in, in the kitchen do you have the stamina can i tell you this jesus got to a point where he was fed up with all the things they were doing and when he knew that there was still more left dear people let me tell you this if it is the glory of god you are going to carry in your life you must sustain the strength 
you will go through high waters you will go through things that are not your business at all are we together now yeah. someone called me one day and said i hear you know so 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 politician i said what does that mean doesn't he have brothers and sisters oh and um this and that and that and i told him i said i'm not a politician i'm a man of god i'm a friend to politicians i love them i don't run away from them i believe i have a ministry to them but if you are calling me to discuss matters of politics please short i don't have that time you see that now because any position god puts you in will come with his own troubles you wait till god elevates you to a position somewhere and someone will come to meet you and say sorry this man who is your friend he's owing me 10 years money from business can you force him for me and he said no no no, i'm not in that and then you're in trouble persecution and criticism whether you belong to jesus or you belong to satan one thing that is common to them both is we don't let them rest there is persecution at both ends so whether you decide to serve jesus or you decide to serve satan one thing you will not escape if you are close enough to any of them is persecution we don't let demons rest every week you see what happens here week in week out so the whole thing is in different dimensions what have i done that people don't like me you succeeded what have i done you are changing lives what have i done you are making a mark in destinies it is not always what you are doing wrong it may be what you are doing right number three very quickly what is the third reason why people get discouraged and get weary even in the kingdom the third reason is called sorrow many of you really do not know what sorrow is sorrow is an emotional state medical people will tell you that this thing we call sorrow is not just a sociological concept it is it is deeply emotional and even a medical condition the feeling of distress the emotional the emotional um what's it now the emotional pain that comes as a result of disappointments as a result of misfortunes as a result of losses is one thing for you to go through seasons that are uncomfortable but when the seasons get to you they produce what we call sorrow are you learning first peter chapter one we'll read the first eight verses first peter chapter one please if god is speaking to you say amen, amen. let's start from verse two did i get that right first peter first peter chapter 4 from verse 12 first peter chapter 4 let's look at verse 12 to 16. beloved okay i read it already think not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you next verse but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of christ's suffering look up please whose suffering is it called that means when you go through listen to me when you go through uncomfortable seasons on account of your love and your determination to become all that god has destined you to be the bible says it is not your suffering you are only partaking of christ's sufferings and the bible says there is a relationship between sufferings and glory it says the sufferings of christ and the glory that shall be revealed that ye may be glad also with exceeding joy next verse it says if ye be reproached for the name of christ the name of christ does not mean when you are directly preaching the gospel on account of your adherence to the principles of the kingdom that you are now excelling and then as a result there are all kinds of things happening to you it says happy are you for the spirit of glory and of god rested upon you it says on their path his evil spoken of 
but on your part he is glorified very very powerful scripture of course the warning is already there none should suffer as a murderer thief evildoer busybody in other men's business and all of that if you suffer as a christian he says do not be ashamed do not be ashamed people persecute you because they thought you will use a political position or any position of honor at all to siphon resources and you have refused you choose the reproach of christ than all of these things let me tell you in africa people will get at you they will say you wasted eight years you wasted whatever years you wasted 30 years serving and you had an opportunity to take your share of the national cake and you refused and you did not let others take it there are many sincere people today in this nation and across africa whose children cannot walk freely with joy because of the anger that people have concerning their success and their victory there are people who today cannot come and give testimony in church is the reason why wealthy and blessed people hardly come to give testimony at best they may just tell the man of god and he prays for them because they are afraid of their own lives that every time people rise we live in a context that makes people feel guilty for the word of god working for them chances are that if you see a beautiful car just pass you can just look and say these wicked corrupt evil people you will vomit every one naira you are you see and it may not be so until you hear the story behind them or individuals who are excelling at any level sorrow it is not unusual to be saddened to be depressed to be downcast as a result of these situations jesus himself got to a point where he was fed up and he was weary when he went to gethsemane you would think he would just be rejoicing listen to me isn't it amazing that when job went through what he went through job worshipped when jesus went through what he went through jesus was willing to say father is it possible to negotiate this job didn't complain no he worshipped but jesus is about to get to the cross and the whole pain of all that he had gone through and the people he was going to die for were not even appreciating him how many children today look at their parents and insult them and say shame on you other people are taking their children around the world we are here and you can only take us to this school all you can do is pay our school fees and it can be painful as a responsible father and mother and you look and say what kind of a child is this you are not grateful that i can send you to school am i the one who gave birth to myself they will respond to you there are times when your good can be evil spoken of it brings sorrow it brings sorrow i know a man years ago who went to do an act of charity in a region somewhere and when he went at the at the end of it they persecuted that man and insulted him and said shame on him that for his status for him to go and give the the mini gifts that he gave the people there they said other ordinary people had done something better it was just a contribution dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.